All right, so this is going to end up our series on interviewing our awesome colors and trying to see the difference between the two so that hopefully it can help you guys out when you're talking to people. Um, so this time we're gonna do red and blue and I'm excited because um, I have some blue in me. So blue is fun and red is just another thing that I aspire to be. So I love reds too. Um, so we have Stacy, which is my blue yellow, Jana, which is my red blue, and then Sabrina, what are you? You're red. Green. Ooh, red green. I know that, that there's always some, you always have a secondary color. And then I have Jennifer Bells, which is my red yellow. So, okay. So we're gonna ask them some questions. I sent them some questions. It's the same, same ones that we used last week. Um, okay. So first off, we're going to start off with our blues. Let's start off with um, Jana. So when you first started, um, what were you skeptical, skeptical about Plexus? So I feel like um, with these colors, it's easy to say, oh, blues are just aloof and just like ditzy and really fun. But you'll find that I... I don't know. I feel like if that's the blue way, I it was not that way at all. Here are all my questions. I've kept it this whole time. If you can see that, I had an entire list of questions for Carissa. And the very first one, Carissa Casey is my sponsor. The very first one at the very top is how would slash could I be successful? I had a fear of failure, huge. I had a fear of rejection, huge. I also said, um, who in the world would be on my team if so many people are already doing it? How do you motivate your team? I had no idea how this even worked, and I really wasn't sure that I knew what I was getting myself into because I don't like to not be successful. I know this is a blue thing, but that's where my red comes in. Um, I was skeptical about just network marketing in general, a key thing, and I didn't want to be part of something that I wasn't in. I didn't want to feel dumb. Because that was another question, I, or not a question. I said, I'm scared and dumb and um, not succeeding. So that was what I was skeptical about. I just, I was skeptical about not being able to do it. Awesome. Stacey, I would love to, yeah. Stacey, I'd love to see a parallel on that one. What were you skeptical about? Well, this is my list. Can you see it? There's nothing there. I didn't know what Texas was. Here's, here's what happened. So for those of you that don't know, Jana Barnes is my upline. And this is about how the conversation went. Hey, Stace, I know you have migraines and I have something that might be able to help. I don't know if it will or not, but I'm going to do it. Do you want to do this with me? Me. Yeah, sure. Sounds fun. Let's do it. Cool. I've been looking for something. This will be fun. Let's do it together. <laughs> That's about how that went. Literally never heard the word of Plexus. Jana knew I'd had migraines. I trusted her. Mm -hmm. She obviously had done her research or felt like she, we were either going to succeed at this together or it was going to fail miserably and we could compare notes. So, you know, I'd, I'd been taking migraine meds forever and I was looking for a more natural approach and she knew that and so I didn't even google it I didn't even I didn't know what a back office was I didn't know what these products were made of I didn't care Janice said hey to probably help and I said hey cool let's yeah <laughs> how's that for uh one of those color personality first ambassador ever and I was like yes people want to do this <laughs> <laughs> and you don't feel dumb see didn't feel dumb as a perfect yeah. person ambassador. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love that. I love that. It, yeah, I love I feel like it kind of goes back to last week. Like it's the person. Exactly. The per person asks you and yeah. like you trust them. And stay and I I noticed Stacy's wording where she was like, let's do this together. Mm -hmm. You know, like Stacy was like, Jana said, hey, let's do this together. And I was like, sure, let's do this. We're either going to do it or we're not. And we're either going to be successful together or we're not. So it was very, seemed more like about the people, less about the company. 
Yeah. So when Janice said, hey, do you want to like work the business with me? I went, nope, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to, I don't want a business. I don't want to sell. I don't want to share. Just no, just no, I ain't got time for that. I'll take it. We'll do this. And, and it stayed that way for a long time, a year. like a long time. Yeah, yeah. like a long time. So, so like what, made, what made the change on that one? So Jan and I have talked about this. Um, you know, for me, I worked at a children's charity that I absolutely loved. And uh, like a year and a half ago, I got married and had an Insta family, which is awesome, but it's very hard to kind of adjust to married life in general. But now you're adjusting to married life and being part of this co-parenting thing. And, you know, life just looks different. And so... I had watched on our team page all this fun that people were having, and I was starting to go, well, I want to go on that trip. Well, I want to do that. Well, now I have major FOMO. Like, what am I missing out on? I need to do this. So then I was like, man, I feel like I'm being selfish, not sharing this with other people because I'm having success with this. I feel better. Man, this sucks. Like in order to help people and in order to have fun, I'm going to have to like talk about this. And that made me want to vomit. So it, it was a lot of things. It was watching Jana, watching that it could be, could be done. That behavior was modeled. That practice was modeled. I was, I wanted to help people and I didn't want to miss out on stuff. So it, it was, it was a perfect combination of, of all of that. That led me to, okay, let's do this. I'm so still learning. We all are. Oh, yeah. So really a lot of it, too, is team page, like really making sure that you're showing the fun things for the blues so that that can intrigue them to maybe, one, want the business. Because I've seen a lot of my people that same way, that whether they were blue or not, the more you post about your, the things that you're doing, the more likely they get intrigued. Um, so, Jana, yeah, oh, yeah. And I know, Cassie, I'm going to jump in. Like, yeah, go for I it. know alongside that a bunch of us are getting ready for convention. Like... Talk about that till you're blue in the face. Huh, funny. Um, <laughs> but, and then when you're, <laughs> I'm full of corny jokes, guys, just wait. Um, awesome. When you're at convention, like take the time to mess voice message or Marco Polo people and be like, oh my gosh, Susie, you have got to be here with me next year. Whether they're blue or not, they're still going to be like, oh, she thought about me while she was there. If they're blue, they're going to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to be there next year. So definitely take that time, like write out your list before you or while you're on the plane or driving there and say, these are the people I've got to like connect with while I'm there. Maybe even while I'm sitting by the pool and be like, oh, it's so pretty here. Can't wait for you to come with me next year. You know, but don't miss out on that opportunity. That was another thing that I loved. Like, I I remember before I decided that I would do Plexus, I I had a conversation with like five or six people in my life who knew that I talked bad about Plexus and who knew that I made fun of it because we would make fun of it together. And I went to them and I said, I think I'm going to do something and you're not going to believe this, but I think I want to do Plexus. <laughs> and they were like, girl, you do it. Like, you'd be really good at it. And I was like, I know, but I've been so hateful towards it and the people, but I want to go traveling and I want to do fun things. And I want to like make money just because that'd be fun. And, um, they were all like, yeah, you should totally do it. And then so I became like, you know, a Saul to Paul kind of deal. <laughs> <laughs> Jana, what eased your mind with Carissa with all of those questions? Like, what finally was it with you? Well, she could answer my questions, first of all. She had an answer for everything. Even if she didn't know, she would still say, I didn't know. One of the questions was, um, is there research to prove it's safe? Because it's not tested on consumerlab.com. Like, I was doing all kinds of research. And um, Chris, so the reason I joined Carissa was because of Chris. Um, her husband, because my husband, Tyler, we've known the Casey's for years and my husband, Tyler trusts Chris Casey. And so I knew that if I was going to do this thing, I could not do it with anyone else that Tyler didn't trust. 
And I knew that it wasn't Carissa necessarily, but it was her husband who was like also a PA. My husband is a PA. Um, if, if Tyler had medical things that he had to ask, I knew that Chris slash would be able to answer them. And I asked Tyler what he's his mind. And it was, um, when we, Tyler was like, I want to see peer reviewed medical literature on every single ingredient that Plexus has in their products. And I was like, okay, like Carissa, do you have any of that stuff? And so she said, actually I do. And so she sent them over to me and I just passed them to Tyler and I said, can you translate this? And like, what is this stuff? And so, um, what eased my mind is that they were safe. I was nursing at the time. They were safe. Tyler said it was safe. I believed him. He's smart. And so I also thought that, you know, if, if Carissa thinks I can do this, and if I had, I had already talked to those people, you know, in my life, they were good friends of mine. And if they thought I could do this, then like, maybe I can do this. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily that I thought I was just awesome and going to rock it. It was that I had, my husband thought I could do it. Like other people thought I could do it. And then my first ambassador, first person I talked to is like, yeah, I'll do it. And I'm like, yay, I'm getting some self-confidence here because I'm getting some positive things from people who are not even, and some of them still don't do it with me. Now, that's not true. Every single one of them that I talk to still does it. They, they have now are either taking their products or they're investors. But um, it, it was just really confidence boosting to think, okay, I can do this. These products are good. They're working for me. And yeah. Awesome. All right. We're going to hear from the red side now. See what the difference is. Sabrina. So what were you skeptical about and then what eased your mind? So I would say I was skeptical about everything. Um, but the thing I was most skeptical about was the business. Um, I am, so I'm an accountant by tr trade. I'm in the finance and I have like my bachelor's and master's degrees in accounting. I'm a CPA and I, I kind of was resentful that when I heard how much money people made in this, so I started because of the products and then I kind of just like watched from the sidelines for a little bit. But then as I kind of like heard that, you know, how much Lorelei was or the average that an emerald made and the average that a diamond made, it kind of made me really mad. <laughs> um, so, um, but then I started to kind of get to know the people. So in September, when we did the September like book studies with Carissa's team, I was on a study with Lorelei and, um, there was one week that we were the only two people that called in. So I started asking her a ton of questions. Like we didn't even talk about the book. I was just like, show me your graphic tree. I want to know your background. I want to know um, how many level ones you have. I want to know how you, like, how have you done this? So she like just showed me everything. She pulled up her graphic tree. We like counted all of them together. <laughs> like, Cause I want to know like, how many do you have to have to make that much money? Yeah. So, um, and then right around that time, um, I started to see the pictures from Maui. And so, although I'm not blue, I do like to go on vacation. And so that looks fun. And then um, shortly after that was leaders retreat and leaders retreat. So like Maui, I mean, I met Lorelai, like, you know, via Zoom up until then. I hadn't actually met her in person until January. Um, but Michelle Meyer, who I went to high school with, did go to leaders retreat. So finally, like leaders retreat was something that I actually saw somebody that I knew going on this like free trip. Um, and so that's kind of what started the peak to peak my interest. So like around that time, I started talking to Michelle about like, Hey, maybe I want to do a sip and see, maybe I want to start. And I posted a couple of things here and there, like maybe once a week, like I was not posting a lot. Um, but I did want to get my products paid for because I'm cheap. So, um, but it was like right around, October, November, that finally, like the end of October, beginning of November, that was a turning point for me where I was like, okay, fine, I'm going to actually try to work it and see what happens. What's interesting is same with you and Stacy is it took a while for both of you to really want the business. And a lot of it was team, seeing your team above you doing it and the people that you know doing it and seeing what they, what they can do. Because obviously if they can do it, you can do it. Um, so that's why it's so, yeah. that's awesome. Um, Okay, Jennifer, what were you skeptical about and what eased your mind? Curious about this. Sorry, I had to take 
off of mute there. Yeah. So what I was skeptical about was, did the products actually work? Sure, they work for everybody else, but, you know, were they actually going to do what I was hoping for them to do and what I was going to spend my money on? Mm -hmm. That's, uh, yeah. What eased my mind about it was, <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> Say hi, Casey. <laughs> um, okay, go watch TV. Um, what eased my mind was um, just watching you um, watch post about Carissa. And what caught my eye and what drew me in was um, seeing a post from Carissa after she had had her baby and it was a picture of her stomach. And I was like, I want that. That is what I need. And so I stalked her page and looked at her pictures and I was like, Okay, maybe, maybe let's give it a try. Um, at the time, I was going back and forth between um, doing Advocare, their 24 day challenge, and then I was, couldn't get over the sticker shock um, because you know it was like $200 for 24 days. And then after talking to uh, my uh, wonderful upline, Cassie, um, and seeing how actually kind of reasonable that the product worked. I was like, all right, I'll suck it up for one month and we'll see how this goes. I was not planning on being on it for the long haul. Nope. So the, what's neat that I saw in both of you is both of you are very much detailed. You needed to see the results. Like you, Jennifer, you wanted to see, you saw Carissa's results, mm -hmm. see something proof, like you needed it, fine line details. For you, you had to see Laura, mm -hmm. like downline. Okay, tell me how you did it. Like, I want to see it all. Um, so it's interesting to see that. And honestly, that was some of last week's calls too. So a lot of us kind of, you know, intertwine in our colors in a lot of ways. Um, Okay, well, Jennifer, you're already talking about cost. So we'll go ahead and start with you. How did you feel about the cost and the ingredients? Um, I never paid attention to the ingredients. That stuff doesn't really bother me. So I didn't care um, what was in them. I just wanted to know if they worked. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, the cost, you know, I mean, yeah, it's, it was a lot of money. So, um, you know, I was like, it hurt, you know, ask him, tell, you know, asking my husband, I'm like, okay, so can I have $150 out of this check to go buy this stuff? And he was like, yeah, I guess so. Um, he said, but you know, we can't do this for, you know, a long period of time. He's like, you know, you can do it for a couple of months, but you know, then, uh, -uh. Um, and so that's whenever, you know, you presented it to me, you know, I can teach you how to get your products paid for. And I took that to my husband and, you know, he was like, that's the only way that you're going to be able to keep doing this is if you get your products paid for. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, you know, a little bit of a sticker shock, um, but, um, not, not as bad as, um, I made it out to be. Hmm. What about you, Sabrina? Um, the, so the, I thought it was expensive, but I also was suffering from severe fatigue and I would have paid anything. So like, I'm, I get, wasn't, as long as it worked, that was all that mattered to me. And as far as the ingredients goes, I never even really looked into them. Um, I just kind of took my sponsor's word for it, that they were okay to take <laughs> and then moved on. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's relationship. Like. Almost all of us have that because again, like with you with Lorelai, you needed that relationship with her to have her show you everything too. Um, okay. Yeah. Jana, we know you had a laundry list of ingredients and costs, so you're muted. <laughs> yeah, I was concerned about the ingredients, but only because I was nursing. I didn't want to mess with that whole thing. And because I was nursing, okay, so my story is the reason I tried Plexus 
in the beginning was because I was nursing and I have two boys. One is five, one is two. But when my two year old was three months old, my supply totally dropped. And I was like, what the heck? And he was a good nurser. And my oldest was a terrible nurser terrible and so we switched to formula for him and he got really sick and formula is expensive per month like it's no joke expensive and so I thought with Connor my second one I thought I want to nurse him because he's so good and it's like everything that I thought nursing would be like not like Mason my oldest he was just terrible so Connor was sweet and I thought I cannot not nurse him and I will do anything to get more breast milk and I had heard Plexus helps with that. It was cheaper, Plexus was cheaper, $150 of Plexus per month was cheaper monthly than the, what we were spending on formula. So I'm like, well, if I can nurse him naturally and save on formula and he cannot be sick and we can have that time together, then I'm gonna do that. But then I was like, well, if I can get these paid for, then I'm gonna do that immediately. So I started sharing right away because I thought, if I can get them for free, I'm going to do that. Stacey, what about you? So cost was not something I balked at because I was paying $258 for six migraine rescue pills that I used in as many or less than that week's. And so for me, it was like, oh, well, shoot, that's cheaper than what I'm paying on my prescription drugs that make me feel like death. Literally for 24 hours, I would feel like death. And so A, it was a natural solution. B, it was cheaper. And so cost really wasn't something um, that was an issue for me particularly. Um, I know it is for a lot of people. And so you know, it can be a challenging conversation. Um, <laughs> so one thing, and my husband is like a master salesperson and he takes Plexus. Would you like to interject anything? You do? No. Okay. I'm listening. He's listening. Uh, so one thing that I've started doing, and I'm a yellow blue, and so this is kind of hard for me, but when people start talking about it's expensive, I'm like, yeah, but what's your health worth to you? Because to me, it's priceless. You know, I'd rather spend a little bit more on prevention than a whole lot more in the end with prescription. Um, and for some people, that's like, whoa, yeah, I never looked at it like that. Um, but, you know, I know that my financial situation is not the same as anybody else's. Um, now, my whole family's on the products. So, yeah, I want to make sure that they're all paid for because that can get pretty costly. You know, there's four of us. So, um, but ultimately, um, it's a win-win. If I can help people and I can replace the income I was making at a children's charity, that's pretty, that's pretty sweet. So I'm going to ask all of y'all, what did y'all feel about the company? Stacy? I didn't know what Plexus was. I didn't know the name. I didn't know. You could have told me it was... Drop or Jew, and I would have not had a clue. So I like that. Well, Jana, you we you knew you about Plexus, and you didn't want anything to do oh, with. Oh gosh, I went to Harding University. You know who else went there? Carissa Casey, Jessica Heffley, and all the people on Jessica Heffley's team, basically. And you know where I'm from? Springfield, Missouri. You know who's from there? Carissa Casey. So my church was tapped out. My college market, like, are you kidding? I thought everybody was doing Plexus. And I was skeptical of it. And it wasn't until, okay, so I joined September 2016. <clears throat> you hear my allergies? Everyone up your BioCleanse and ProBio5 because allergies are going to get you. So I joined September 2016, right? 15. 15. 15. Because I was. Mm -hmm. 2015. Okay. September 2015, and I went to convention in July, in June of 2016. And it was at convention that I realized that I had had faith in me. I believed in me and my abilities. I believed in these products and what the products could do, but I did not believe in the company until I went to convention. And you have to have all three of those things to be successful in this business. You have to have belief in all three. 
up until that time at convention, I went to convention as a gold. The next three months, I was senior gold. The next three months, I was ruby. The next three months after that, I was senior ruby. It was like boom, 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 because I had the trifecta of belief. And so I highly encourage you to get to convention if you can. I know they're sold out already, which is crazy, but that's how important it is to build belief in the company. It's almost like for me, for me, because I'm, I guess I'm red. I mean, I know I'm red, but I guess I just had to see it. I had to see these people who were in charge of everything. I had to see them. I had to trust them. And then um, through all of that momentum, we won silver stars and I got to go to corporate. Like that was the most belief building thing. So the, the times that I have spent with corporate builds my belief in them. And, and when I wasn't able, like before silver stars, before convention, I would just do a lot of reading on the internet, like articles that from like direct, direct home business or whatever. I would just read about them. I was skeptical. There's lots of shady things on the internet about Plexus, but it wasn't until I actually was able to see Alec and Tarl and their corny jokes as a gold ambassador. And I'm like, okay, these guys are super dorky and they surely can't be like skeezy because they're kind of nerdy, but I, and I like it. <laughs> Sabrina. Um, I'm similar to Stacy. I didn't know anything about the company. I, I would say I was skeptical of it because I was skeptical of all network marketing. Um, but it the company didn't matter again like I just was desperate for the product so I would have you could have sold me magic beans and told me they were going to fix my fatigue and I would have bought them mm -hmm. and Jennifer never heard no clue what it was yeah. so that's what's interesting is like Jana was the only one obviously because she thought her, her market was saturated but everybody else could care less no matter what color they were like I didn't care. It's really based on relationship. Like if you can tell on both calls, like relationship is so key. I know we're winding, winding down on time. So Ashley, what do you feel like um, we could ask them one more thing or what do you think? Oh man. Well, I do want to add that as they were talking about cost, what stuck out to me was that people are willing to spend money if they find a value in it. Yeah. You know, like Jana, for her, it was her baby's health and the fact that she was going to be spending that money on formula. So she was going to have a win-win if it worked. Yeah. And I think it was Stacy was having the migraines. Was that Stacy or was that? Yeah, it was Stacy. Okay. Stacy was having the migraines. So, and like that stuff that we don't know that people are like have going on. And so when I like hear that, I'm like, ooh, these are post ideas. Like I have got to communicate this to my group of people that there's a different way than spending a hundred and some dollars a month on medication, that there's a different way than trying to search for all those coupons for formula. Like I lived on like, who has a coupon? I need to buy formula. <laughs> I mean, I remember that, but I have never posted that, but I remember that fear. Like, dang, I'm going to, I had twins. Like, I'm going to have to buy formula for two babies and because I couldn't keep up on the milk supply. If someone would have offered me Plexus at that time, hands down, I would have bought it. Mm -hmm. Just, I was buying all the fenugreek and yeah. drinking all the water and I mean, oatmeal for days. Like I was doing all of that stuff. Have I ever posted that? No. Now I have an idea. Like I need to post about that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just kind of got my wheels turning of like, May's coming up. I got to plan out a calendar of like, how am I going to talk about the cost in different ways to reach different people? So that just stuck out to me real quick. Um, I don't know. I mean, I got so much out of it tonight already. Like to me, I just heard it again and again and again. It comes with connection and it comes with being transparent. Like when people ask you questions, don't run. Don't say they're stupid for asking those questions. Like, find out the answer and be real with them. And, like, I think that's a big thing. Like, Sabrina's a red-green, so she definitely, like, she wants it cut and dry. Like, give it to me. I don't need no fluff. I just want to know. Yeah. Like, how many people does this take? And I would say I'm a red, too. That's very true of me. I want to know exactly. Like, don't say, well, the average person makes. Nothing makes me more angry than when I see those statements. 
mm-hmm. like the average ambassador makes. Right. Just tell me. And I know we can't. I know we can't publicly post that stuff. But as a red, I want to know the real deal. Mm-hmm. What do you actually make? What does your paycheck look like? And um, I it's, every month too. Because yes. Like, oh, that's probably just a one month thing that you're getting that. Not at all the time. Right. Yes. Like when people say things like it covers my mortgage, I am so skeptical. I'm like, yeah, it covers the mortgage. It doesn't cover your taxes, which in Illinois is an astronomical amount of money. It doesn't cover your taxes. It doesn't cover your homeowners or homeowners insurance. I'm always like breaking it down. Like, yeah, that's like $500, not like the the $1,500 that I pay in my mortgage or whatever. So that's the red in you. You need every little detail. So like, like you said, these are great post ideas. Like even though it's not something that you would like, start thinking of the things that you've learned from these calls and what can you make a post about that might intrigue your red, might intrigue your blue. And, yeah. And on and your like, team page, on your team. And page. find the opportunity to connect people where we can be real, where we can say, like Sunny Rogers just did a, we did a um, seven day challenge group and she did one of the testimonies for us. And because it was a private group, like she straight up told us what her paycheck was. Was, I think it was like 13,000, I forget exactly, but it was like 13,000, like she said those words and it was like, I believe you, like this is actually what you're making, not what the average Sapphire makes. Yeah. Um, and so like, we've got to find opportunities for people to hear the real numbers yeah. and, and connect because the reds and greens that speaks, I mean, who doesn't want $13,000? I think it speaks to any color, but <laughs> the reds and greens want to know the real the real numbers. So I don't know. I really loved all this. Go ahead. Sorry. So y'all are in for a treat because my super red awesome salesperson of a husband has a thought that he wants to share. So I hope that's cool. Yep. How's everybody doing? Good. How are you? I am doing great. (laughs) I think I know Jana and that might be it. Um, (laughs) Cassie. uh, Cassie as well. So I'm listening and I, I like to listen. Obviously, Stacy's story is a little bit unique. <clears throat> so I'm a commercial insurance consultant. I specialize in employee benefits and Plexus, by definition, and tell me if I'm wrong, is a health and wellness company, correct? Right. Nod your head, <laughs> right? Okay. So if you look at what employer-sponsored benefit plans have done over the last years and let's let's fast forward to the last five years more and more employers are forcing higher deductibles higher out-of-pocket maxes higher more more they call it consumer driven health care but they're putting more burden on the employee on the families on every every aspect of it higher deductibles higher co-pays higher ER visits urgent cares you name it everything's higher cost so your product or preventative or preventive in nature. And if somebody has a four thousand dollar deductible, a six thousand dollar max out of pocket, how much is it worth to them to spend a little bit on preventive maintenance versus having to come up with it all out of pocket? Yeah. So in the world of insurance, there's cancer, there's accident insurance, there's critical illness, there's all kinds of fear emotional based products that people just buy because they think they're protected. In reality, those products don't have, and we call it a loss ratio, but the insurance companies uh, are just making tons and tons of profit on it because most people don't have cancer or I shouldn't say most people don't have cancer. Most people don't have the product when they get cancer, if they get cancer. So, um, I'll sum it up by saying, remember the insurance aspect of it, because if you're trying to tie an emotional connection to why your product brings value, there's more burden put on an end user or on a consumer in today's market and you sell a preventive solution. So Stacy's uh, migraine component, like I'm a huge red and <laughs> buy this book, it's all about the money. And uh, I, I support it. I'm all about it. But <laughs> it, like, there's there's cost savings. Like, um, and my personal testimony is I haven't had heartburn in a long time, and I clearly oh, uh, 
don't always uh, follow the uh, best diet. So, all right, I'm gonna go. Thank you for sharing. And that, yeah. like, that is so true. I just saw like two or three posts on like the Yorkville Moms page today about like, help, I don't know what insurance to get. Insurance is so expensive. You know, we've got to pay this much out of pocket. And really, guys, like, we have a super high deductible because if we're going to go to that doctor, it's going to be something major. Like I'm not going to the doctor for a sniffle. So I don't even worry about like the co-pays and stuff like that. Cause we go to a chiropractor, we take our vitamins, we use oils. Like we've taken on a preventative, um, but that's such a burden for so many people, you know, trying to find insurance and, and he's right. Like they have, of course he's right. That's what he does. Um, but thank you for pointing it out. I guess it would be a better way of saying that. Um, about how many people like struggle and lose sleep over that about their insurance and what happens when they have to go to the doctor every month with their kids and for themselves. And so that's a really good point. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot because some people have to pay like a thousand dollar deductible just to start. Like there's just so mm -hmm. It's just so expensive. So good eye opener. Um, do y'all have any other questions before we end? And then I'll stop recording and then we'll open it up again. Do you have any questions for anybody? Okay. I'm so glad you guys came and I hope that you learned a lot on the, on the series that Ashley and I did on just learning a little bit more about colors, how to reach them. Obviously the main component that you just found with these calls is relationship. I value the person. It really matters whether what, what no matter what color they are, um, some want details, some don't even care. So it just depends. Like relationship is key. So remember that. Um, yeah. I'm glad you guys came. I'm going to stop recording and then.